Urgen Jasun Si reacts on this is Chinese military spy base in Cuba exposed by channel Task and Purpose. Yes, this is a Task and Purpose video, and there was a video about like uh, how there is a island of Taiwan basically touching Chinese mainland. Basically, just there, you can just see that, which really surprised me. I feel like you know I've, I've heard of that uh, information before, but somehow I've forgotten it until I watched that video. Just like, oh yeah, that, what the hell? So that's some insane thing. You can see skyscrapers and things like buildings from just that distance, and there's a Taiwan island, right, where USA uh, did some drills and things. It's like we that, that's way too close to Chinese mainland, which is insane. And in that video, Task and Purpose basically said, like Chris basically said that you know there is a, a you know base in Cuba. China also has a base in Cuba. And to that, it's like, okay, it makes sense. Like, US, Taiwan, Taiwan Island basically touching China. China would do the same thing. But what surprised me is that, like, China is a recent power. Why well, US has been powerful, like, century or something, right? At least at this level, right? It was even economical power before that, but it's like at this level, right? Since the world wars, right? So, in Cold War and things, right? Like, it, U.S. having bases basically everywhere, it just makes sense. It's a flex, it's a number one power in the planet still, right? $800 billion defense budget. But China basically doing the same thing to U.S. It feels like, why would U.S. let that happen in the first place, right? It must have happened very recently, right? So why didn't U.S. know that, seeing that coming and try to prevent it somehow? Because, uh, I don't know, like, U U.S. is the kind of thing, like, has been so powerful, like, having bases everywhere, basically. There's no place where you can think of U.S. doesn't have a, some kind of a military-style base, right? And having this kind of, like, force around the planet with, like, what, a ton of aircraft carrier that can go anywhere, which is basically floating city at that point. This kind of flex only U.S. can do. But other countries doing that to U.S.A. feels weird. So I don't know how, uh, you know, like strong this is, like what type of base China has there and like, are they like spying on US? Is that a threat or something? But it's going to be interesting to watch it. Let's watch it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So the way I know which type of videos to react tomorrow. I like watching geopolitics basically. Uh, it was not a thing I used to think about before I was started to watch, you know, started to do reaction channels and things like all these videos. And then I realized, wait a minute, this is so good. I think it started with real life lore. And since then, I've, you know, like found many channels like Task and Purpose and Few, which is like really interesting to see how things are working at this global scale. So, yeah, let's do this one. The Chinese Communist Party is operating a network of spy bases in Cuba, just 90 miles off the coast of Florida. In July 2024, the Center for Strategic and International Studies published a report outlining how there's a growing network of signals intelligence bases here, similar to how the United States military runs intelligence gathering operations in Taiwan, right near China. It appears like China's trying to turn the turntables back around. These radars could jam and use electronic warfare capabilities against U.S. assets. They could monitor several key military bases in America. So, when did these radar networks first appear? What is their purpose? Are Cuban communists responsible for jamming my car radio? Are they whispering sweet Marxist ideology through my Alexa while I sleep? I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Let's find out. I try to stay as objective and accurate as possible when it comes to geo. Yeah, that, that is very interesting. As far as like communist ideas, I think your college is already doing that. Yeah, the, uh, you know, the whole Florida thing. Imagine if like they, <laughs> they decided to invade America from there, from Cuban base, <laughs> invade Florida. I think they would just run back, seeing all those alligators and shit, just walking anywhere and just people like, having alligator pets. They're like, okay, let's not invade. Let's just go back. It will go to ground.news for us task and support this channel or go to the original video page link and from there support this channel. Bringing transparency to the information we consume. Ever since Cuba's communist revolution led by Fidel Castro in January of 1959, the country has remained a partner for several fellow communist nations for several reasons, I think. One of which is their close proximity to the United States, which makes Cuba the perfect location for those comrades to peek over at the United States to see what they're up to. I know I sound paranoid when I say that they're listening to us, but just take a look at Bayuco, Cuba. Yeah, I think the reason they align to communist state because they are themselves communist and 
What uh, Chris just said is like aligns with that anyway, because like America had embargoes and shit on Cuba because they are communists in the first place, and they are aligned with communists because they are communists. It's just like you know, if if you like part of a certain team, uh, you, you're automatically create, create sides basically, and it just makes sense. So uh, you know you're not gonna have like same kind of relations with like USA, UK, and places like that. So you have to have relations with like communist uh, countries, obviously. In 1962, at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, this military satellite and radar station here was crucial for them to monitor the airspace around the island as they look for U.S. spy planes and other threats. But today, this base has recently undergone some major renovations. Take a look at these satellite images from Google Earth that show the construction... Mm, remove, remove Soviet flag and put up Chinese flag. ...construction of a new SIGINT facility identified by CSIS. Large-scale construction began here in 2017. The white ball on the top of the finished structure appears to be what's called a radome. What's a radome? Well, it's a structure that has weatherproofing enclosures that protect the internal radar systems. It basically keeps it safe and sound from the nasty elements. When I measure it, we can see that the radome appears to be approximately 20 feet in diameter. And based on that size, we know it could cover a number of different radars from satellite communications to military grade. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like they, uh, this is an interesting thing because I didn't know this was a thing, right on. But they can basically like write that off like, what is that? Like somebody's just like, what are you doing there? What is that? Oh, it's an astronomy thing, right? We, it's a telescope. We're looking at the skies. Basically, it looks like that, right? So you can even hide it as that, basically. Grade radar for tracking and surveillance. In some more photos, you can also see what was once a baseball field in 2013, now appears to be a circular disposed antenna array, or CDAA. If you know anything about Cuban culture, then you would understand that getting rid of a baseball field would not be taken lightly there. This location has 16 really? antennas, which are commonly Hello, used visible. for ELENT, or electronics intelligence, and it's gathering. Now, their circular arrangement intercepts radio waves and triangulates their position. So basically, this means you could try to identify the position of U.S. military aircraft. In this last series of imagery, you can see what was once an empty field in 2008 was transformed into a radar antenna farm. By 2022, this has now grown to 12 antennas. An antenna farm like this serves many purposes for signals collection. Multiple antennas tell us that it's for increased sensitivity and resolution beyond what you might need for innocent civilian purposes. Ultimately, the more antennas you have, it helps you pick what direction you want to listen to and how far. What if, one of their you know, what if one of your citizens suddenly start to fly like a superman? We need to keep an eye on that. We need radar for that. Potential targets would be Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, just over 100 miles away, where they could track United States military troop movements and sensitive discussions. If they push further, they could track military aircraft tests like F-35 and B-21 bomber stealth aircraft testing that happens in Nevada, where Area 51 is located about 2,000 miles away. China could use these tracking devices to determine when American long-range bombers are taking off and returning. CSIS claims that together, these former Cold War sites are now armed with radar technology that can reportedly track signals anywhere from 3,000 to 8,000 nautical miles. That's virtual. You're kidding me. That's an insane amount of like size. Look at the most of Pacific. Pacific is like one of those places where like people are really keeping their eyes on and some of US dominates that, which is like, yeah, because Pacific is like the largest, uh, you know, any given place, right? There's a point from the globe you can see, right? Where you don't see any land. You just see Pacific Ocean. That's how big it is. It's like very specific angle. Right? Barely some land in the horizon, but it's mostly just ocean. That's how big Pacific is. And like Pacific is really important and strategic for many things, right? You can do a lot of things there, let's just say. So yeah, it's really interesting that like, they can just like keep an eye like that in Pacific. But obviously China from China can also keep an eye on Pacific. But this is like two directional now, isn't it? Which is interesting. Actually, the entire Western Hemisphere, including my house. That's why I never go outside. It's not because people don't invite me anywhere. It's because I don't want Cuban revolutionaries spying on me. Should I be more worried about the U.S. government spying on me? Probably. Over the last few years, Cuba has seen some major Chinese state investment in infrastructure and telecommunications that on the surface appear to serve... Some yeah, what I don't understand is like I, was, I heard about those things, right? Like Huawei, Chinese Huawei, right? 
like America banned that company because they were keeping eyes on like spying on people. And then some people say, yeah, but Facebook and like Meta and everybody just like, you know, Apple already, you know, like spying on us. What about that? Uh, those are your companies, right? It's still like, wow, listen, but those are your company keeping an eye on you. A Chinese company, which has like some percentage of like Chinese government stake in it, keeping an eye on like US citizen is obviously a defense problem, right? How are those two things similar? People always talk about like, but what about Meta? What about Facebook? Like that's not the same, right? Your own people, like, that's more advertisement, just exploitation, money related. This could be like, a, you know, like defense related issue. Civilian purposes, but underneath they have military capabilities. China has built most of the technology infrastructure, this means that they're able to implement their censorship of Cuba's internet and wipe away any of that pesky anti-China information. Cuba's what? relatively small size, population, and economy means that it often gets eclipsed in the United States by larger security concerns from nations like Russia and China. The entire island is just about the same size as the state of Pennsylvania. However, many aren't aware that Cuba's economy is reportedly on the brink of collapse, reaching dire conditions in just the last few years. Now, this is due to several different factors, including COVID, US sanctions. Oh, that is the worst position to be in. If your economy is about to collapse, you probably look to China as other countries do. Sri Lanka, I guess, uh, Pakistan, right? Many countries out there who's desperate, obviously, your friendly China is always there to lend your hand so it can debt trap you. Basically, at the time, like, you have to, like, give China whatever they want after that, right? Uh, Chinese debt trap is, like, really famous. Like, everybody knows that by now, right? Anybody who's ever turned on news knows about that. And, like, yeah, this is a disastrous recipe. Cuban economy is collapsing. Obviously, China's going to lend hand. And then, yeah, China's going to spy on U.S. Why didn't U.S. lend hand knowing this thing, like... If China helps South Cuba, it's going to be a problem. You know, they are our neighbors. I'm pretty sure recently they like lifted embargo or something on Cuba just a few years ago. U.S. should have strategically like with like geopolitical driven thing should have helped out Cuba. So Cuba is more like cozy towards USA rather than China. And their socialist state dominated system that controls prices and is rife with mismanagement and corruption. This socialist central planning has been a disaster, not just for Cuba, but other nations like Venezuela, who used to help keep Cuba's economy afloat. Since the 1960s, the United States government has kept an embargo on Cuba, which restricts most U.S. businesses from working with Cuba. It limits their trade and travel to and from the country, although some things like humanitarian goods, food, and medicine are exempt. But this is one lever of influence that the U.S. government maintains over Cuba, the ability to loosen the embargo. This financially dire situation puts Cuba sort of at the whim of other larger countries. Since 1962, Russia has paid Cuba an annual salary of about $200 million to share information and maintain the operation of a listening post in Lourdes, Cuba. The Insider Damn, reports that okay. at the time, sections of the facility were leased to intelligence officers from China and North Korea, who allegedly used them to study Spanish. Donde esta los Americanos warshipos? Como se dice mi American nuclear secrets? Por qué no? However, this we are trying to learn Spanish. Oh, okay. You want to spy at USA? Oh, but shh, don't say out loud. Spy operation was shut down in 2001 after the Cold War appeared to be over. But we're not naive enough to believe this period of peace would last. Because according to the insider, Russian GRU intelligence agents have since visited this site, indicating that Russia is or already has opened it once more. When did this change? This Russian military journal alleges that talks to reopen the Lourdes Signet site began in July of 2014 after the invasion of Crimea. Yeah, I was about to say, just, I was about to say very recently after the current invasion, no, but after the first invasion. It just makes sense, right? Like. Uh, the dominoes were falling, right? Russia knew dominoes started to fall. Like they, you know, they took over Crimea. They were eventually going to attack Ukraine. So it's like in that direction, US is going to become problem. And like, yeah, let's start things to like focus on US and more if they become problem in the future, right? It just makes sense. They would do that after Crimea thing, right? Why does this even matter? Well, these spy bases are located right along the maritime route that much of American troop movements to Europe transits through. U.S. troops leave from a port in Texas and travel right through here. 
Well, according to CSIS, there are four possible SIGINT and satellite control stations used at least partially by the CCP. Bayuco, El Salo, Leja, Calabazar. Of these three, they're located along the outskirts of Cuba's capital in Havana. Havana also happens to be one of the closest places on the island to mainland United States. El Salio is on the opposite side of the island, which is located right down the road from the United States naval base at Guantanamo Bay. There is some reason to believe that the United States government and military purposefully turns a blind eye to these developments for the past two decades for several reasons. The first is that unless the United States wants to unleash unholy levels of violence on Cuba and bomb those radars into oblivion, what can they really do to stop them? The second is that this affords the United States intelligence agencies a unique opportunity Hold up there. This might be stupid, after, you know, after watching all this video for me to say, like, if Cuba is so opposing to USA and just like alliance with more communist countries, how is USA still allowed to use Cuban ground for Guantanamo Bay? But it's just like once they have it, they don't want to give it back. And what are they going to do? Attack USA? Is that, is that the point is? Like they have it now. What are they going to do? Because I don't know, man. Or, it, or maybe all these things is not a problem because... USS somehow covertly already controls Cuba in a way. They already have Guantanamo Bay there, right? Like maybe they're like already infiltrated Cuba enough. That even though like other countries might try to spy on USA, USA might be spying on them to know what exactly they're learning type of shit. I mean, after seeing all the shit CIA has done and all that, that wouldn't be that far off, right? Like that could happen. Maybe USA already knows what kind of intelligence is flowing through Cuba to study the methods that Chinese intelligence uses. This is part of counterintelligence. The United States is able to determine how advanced some of China's intelligence gathering capabilities are and the intentions behind them. Both the United States and China spy on each other from islands near their territory, which I think is kind of crazy. But there's an aspect of mutual deterrence that could help explain why we see this. It's often forgotten and it's called transparency allowing your adversary to monitor some of your movements to confirm that you're not taking any aggressive action against them can be beneficial for both sides. It can also be useful as a way to funnel disinformation to China. On top of all of that, there's also a lot of evidence to suggest that these bases- Talking about what wasted energy, right? Spying on each other for spying, just so there is no spying at each other because both are spying at each other and it's just like transpiracing there, but like what? But I guess what is the alternative? Not spying on each other. Nobody's going to believe that. So yeah, spy on both of them. So both of them know nobody's into any funny business. Bases in Cuba hold little actual strategic military value for China. For example, we can see that China has not significantly helped Cuba in their economic crisis that they're currently facing. They have given some aid and money. They've helped with some infrastructure development, That's but interesting. nothing major. If Cuba had military strategic value to China that was critical, we would expect to see more help from them. This is because from a practical point of view, these military developments are largely symbolic. They represent a bit of a flip of the old bird yeah, I was, that's what I'm thinking from the start. Like, how does this, like, I get it, China is becoming powerful, but are you going to, like, poke the bear, right? Literally, like, I mean, USA is not stupid. Like, USA, based in the modern spying, is probably, like, pioneered by USA, right? Now you're going to spy, basically, at them, just directly next door. But you can see Florida, basically, 150 miles from there, just, that's just there. You're just point blank going to spy where USA just get pissed off or something. So, yeah, like providing aid to cuba just like they provide aid to like pakistan and things would be like one of those signs like what are you trying to do here are you trying to like buy out cuba or something indirectly trying to spy at us like creating a threat like you don't want to poke us at that much right so it just makes sense to the united states government but beyond that not much else any potential fight between the us and china would take place in the pacific over 4,000 miles away so currently, bases in Cuba isn't going to suddenly allow China to project power beyond its current capabilities. Exactly. But don't get me wrong. This How are they going to do that exactly? Right? Let's say China needs to move troops into like Cuba. How? First of all, China would need to like access Indian Ocean. And like, if USA aligns with India, that's a problem there. How are they going to supply troops to Cuba? It's just like Pacific is the only way for them to show force like that. Right? And not to mention all the bases the U.S. have in Indian Ocean. This is not to say that these bases hold no value for China. 
It is true that the Chinese and Cuban military officials met 33 times between 2003 and 2016 alone. China has helped Cuba upgrade its air defense systems, maintain its Soviet-era aircraft, and upgrade some of its MiG-21 fighter interceptor aircraft. But this is like the equivalent of buying your friend a cup of coffee when they're asking you to buy a car. At the same time, though, Beijing and Cuba are in talks to establish a permanent military training base in Cuba. This is fascinating to me because it mirrors recent similar reports of U.S. military training bases being opened in Taiwan. It appears both sides are playing a bit of a game of tit for tat. Tiny escalations here to see where the rest. Yeah, but like China is claiming Taiwan and like trying to take over that. That's a problem. And the U.S. is there. U.S. is not claiming Cuba and have any plans of invading Cuba. So it's not the same situation, is it? If anything, by doing that, U.S. can just like justify. You are in Cuba, so I'm in Taiwan. What's the problem, right? Like China can't just say like, okay, Taiwan is ours. Like we already told you like Taiwan is still China. Now they can say, like, why are you there? Like, okay, because you're in Cuba. Red lines are for each side. We should really take a look at the official response from the CCP to get an idea of what their official line is on all this. When asked, China responded by saying, What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> just hanging around. The Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C. called the CSIS report nothing but slander, saying that the U.S. side has repeatedly hyped up China's establishment of spy bases or conducting surveillance activities in Cuba. Cuban Deputy Foreign Minister Carlos Fernandez de Casio supported China on X, saying the Wall Street Journal persists in launching an intimidation campaign related to Cuba without citing a verifiable source or showing evidence. It seeks to scare the public with legends about Chinese military bases that do not exist and no one has seen. Yeah, what evidence that CIA spied on them to learn this information? It's just like, how you got this evidence by, I don't know, stealing it? Like, how are you going to show that, right? And they know that basically. This is like political game, right? Like, show me the evidence. I can't because I didn't obtain the, that evidence legally. Including the U.S. Embassy in Cuba. Not surprisingly, perhaps, China denies that they're up to anything down, dirty, and low here. But there is another potential reason that this could be important to China. In order to operate any satellites on the other side of the Earth, China needs ground stations that can track and command satellites in the Western Hemisphere. They already operate a satellite station in the Southwest Hemisphere from a ground station in Argentina. So what this means is Cuba gives China access to ground stations in the Northwest Hemisphere similar to how the United States operates satellite intelligence bases in Australia and around the world for the same purpose. The official line from the US government changed recently in 2019 when they did admit that there were spy bases there in Cuba at all, although it's been believed that they've been there for over 20 years. Cuba can also be used as a forward operating base for offensive electronic warfare in the event of a need to interrupt U.S. communications, electronic networks, and GPS. This audio, captured over ham radio frequencies, is the actual sound of Cuban jamming. Cuba has a history of jamming ham radio networks in times of internal instability to prevent political dissident voices from reaching the islands from the United States. This FCC memorandum published in 1995 cited that persistent Cuban jamming of VHF transmissions jamming occurred again in 2021 when popular protests started in Cuba. A report from the FCC alleges that the Cubans are even interfering with air traffic communications and have even made false transmissions to the air traffic control tower in New York. What? That's where I fly out of sometimes. That's not cool, Cuba. Knock that off. These bases appear that is beyond that that is something that one should get USS should get pissed off about like you doing all this shit I understood like you're like actively threatening uh, my airlines come on that's insane especially when it comes to airlines right uh, people are already scared of planes and shit after like all the like, security reason behind it after 911 now you're going to jam transmissions to the airline that's a big issue i don't know like that's fucked up to be part of a larger strategy though in the caribbean south and central america china has made some inroads over the last several years through trade and investment take a look at these pictures from visualcapitalist.com these are country countries countries going through their primary trading partner in 1960. Uh, where, it, where the fuck is oh that that's that's what this is german flag right so this is like okay germany damn all right 
PNC Germany like having this kind of like power bar, right? It's connected to Germany a lot, but where is I think that's is that Russia? I think that's Russia, right? I don't even know. Yeah. So this is really interesting, man, seeing this kind of a graph. All right. I mean, it would make sense with the Russia, right? Like, iron cotton back then, and just like not having much, you know, trading with anyone. But yeah, even in 2020, that's interesting. Line share. This matters because trade and investment buys access and influence. Access starts with installing dual use telecommunications infrastructure like Huawei. And if you're paranoid like me, it ends with military intelligence cooperations to spy on American bases. Influence keeps you there by propping up those key politicians who are favorable to you. This goes to show that these Chinese listening stations in Cuba are a cog in a much larger machine. They are the ears for a larger strategy. It mainly makes me look paranoid when I tell my family that the Cubans are listening to our conversations, but you're not paranoid if they're actually out to get you. I think largely these listening outposts are harmless though at this point in time. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Let me know what you think. And anyone who's monitoring this net, please leave a comment. Yeah, all right. That whole, uh, whole, whole speak about like, you're not paranoid if you're right. Psychology is very weird, right? And there's like emergence, right? So even if you're right, and somehow you turned out to be right to be paranoid, doesn't make you less paranoid. You're still paranoid. Unless you have like real proper evidence that only you have and somehow you can't show anyone that makes you think something, then you're not paranoid, right? Sometimes pa paranoia gets justified. See, I was right. That doesn't still make you any less. You just happen to be right, right? It's just like, uh, I don't know, like throwing a rock randomly and hitting somebody. See, I, I knew that. No, you didn't. It just like happened to hit somebody. You just threw the rock randomly. But yeah, the whole this tuba thing is really weird. Like, you know, causing issues even in the airliner and things. Like that, that's a problem, right? Especially with Boeing now, right? Uh, all those planes, doors flying off. You don't need to add to that shit. But there you go. All right, well, those Chinese military spy base in Cuba exposed by general task and purpose. If you like more, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.